Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday evening, October 2nd. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We continue to watch a couple of areas in the Atlantic. We have newly formed Tropical Depression 25 east of the Yucatan Peninsula, a tropical wave behind that in the eastern Caribbean, and another tropical wave out in the central Atlantic, though this one we won't spend time on today as it is not expected to have a high chance of developing and is not expected to be a land threat, even if it does. We're going to start off here with uh, Tropical Depression 25. This is the system we talked about last night and has continued to get better organized. The circulation that we noted yesterday that was developing has intensified today, and we can see very clear rotation in this region on visible satellite imagery, in addition to lots of spiral banding structure here coming out of the northwest on the west side, lots of banding curling in toward the center of circulation. This is a well-structured vortex, which means it is healthy and with convective activity increasing near the center. We have a young tropical cyclone that looks poised to continue strengthening in the short term. Uh, the thing standing in its way most imminently is the fact that it's likely to move over the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula by as early as tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, so it has limited time over water with which to strengthen, uh, but it will likely strengthen at least modestly as it approaches the coast. In terms of impacts to land from this, the question is always, you know, how explosively can it intensify in the remaining hours before landfall? And at this point, one of the things we look for is how tight the circulation is, uh, because smaller circular compact circulations can intensify quicker. It appears from visible satellite imagery today that we have had a slight elongation of the vortex right now from southeast to northwest, not quite perfectly circular and not super compact. And that implies that there will be at least some sort of delay in any rapid intensification, although a modest increase in strength is likely overnight tonight. Now this will probably get more compact as it nears the coast, but at that point hopefully running out of time to make a run at hurricane intensity, though the upper end of uh, landfall intensities here may reach up to 70 mile per hour winds or so in the worst case. Right now expected to be just a little bit below that uh, sometime tomorrow morning near or south of Cozumel. And the primary impact here is likely to be mostly rainfall and the potential for flash flooding in the eastern part of Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, and up into western Cuba here as well as this wide area of spiral banding spreads rainfall over the region. We do have a recon plane in there right now. I don't think I have enough observations yet to show you any, uh, but the plane is flying in toward the center now, and after this video has been posted, the plane will likely be collecting new information on just how strong TD-25 currently is. If we look at the uh, European model depiction of what's going on here, this is the run from this morning, 850 millibar vorticity, showing the circulation here, and by tomorrow morning, it's nearing the coastline as a stronger vortex, as we expect. This would be named Tropical Storm Gamma, once it attains winds of 40 miles per hour, which it may already have, we'll see what the plane finds. And as we continue on, we'll see that it, it has to pass over land, so it weakens on the model. And we have seen a little bit more consensus today for it to at least pass over this portion of the Yucatan instead of skirting up to the east of the Yucatan. There's more model consensus that it will at least pass over some portion of the landmass, which will mute its intensity during Saturday night and Sunday. And at this point here, after we get past the weekend, it becomes a little bit of a question mark what the storm's future is, because if it's far enough south that it stalls out over the landmass, it will continue weakening as it does here on the Euro, and even if it gets back out over water, it uh, remains broad and sort of a weaker end storm on model solutions like this. If we look at the GFS, uh, it's a little bit different as we, we do get the landfall here, just like on the Euro. Uh, it does make it back offshore near the northern coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula instead of staying inland. Uh, but it's close because it is slowing down here. And the reason it's slowing down is because we have very strong uh, northeast flow behind the old cold front that's sitting here. Remember, if we look at the Atlantic, we do have a big cold front to the north of TD25. Lots of northeast flow of cold air behind that will try to block the storm's northward progress and try to force it back westward into the Bay of Campeche. Uh, but at this point, uh, it's unclear just how far north the storm will get before that happens, uh, because we do have another flow on the other side of the front trying to pull it this way. If we look at the mid-level flow on on the GFS, you'll see this here where we have strong flow behind the front out of the north 
but then a strong flow on the eastern side over Florida, trying to pull this moisture away from the storm and also pull the storm itself northward into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, given that the storm is expected to be over land and perhaps ingesting some of this dry air around the south side at some point, we are expecting a weaker vortex, so it's unlikely to actually make a turn very far to the north, and even if it comes out over the gulf for a little while, we are expecting a blocked motion back toward the west, and uh, nearly all models agree on that point. Uh, the question is kind of whether this occurs over the landmass of the Yucatan or if it gets a little far enough north to get more water time, at which point we could see uh, a range of tracks uh, ranging from something down here to something a little bit farther north toward the westerly direction is generally what models expect uh, and possibly re-intensifying if it can get rid of the dry air. But you can see on the GFS here, it kind of stalls, gets a lot of dry air into it and then eventually pushes off toward the west and kind of has trouble as we see the wave behind it come into the Gulf, uh, but it never really redevelops on the model. Compared to yesterday, the GFS had a hurricane redeveloping in the southwestern Gulf here, so we do have some variability in uh, TD25's future. Much will depend on what happens this weekend, and we'll probably have to take it from there after we see how much land interaction it has with the Yucatan Peninsula. Right now, this is the NHC official forecast uh, showing that general motion northwest toward the coast of Mexico near Cozumel, where a tropical storm warning is in effect for that portion of coastline up as far as Cancun, and uh, then continuing to move northward until it slows down on Sunday and makes that slow turn toward the west or southwest, like we mentioned. And, uh, you know, again, here's the cone of uncertainty. Pretty large here. Not really sure whether it's going to be down near the part of Mexico that may need to worry about this in the southern Gulf, or if it might be a little bit farther north and potentially come farther west later in the week. But a slow moving system by day five, likely to still be over uh, the Gulf of Mexico waters. So interests in Mexico, farther west, still several days to watch this to see how it interacts with the landmass early on and what that does to its future. Now, if we look at the broader view of the satellite picture here, uh, we still have this wave behind TD25. So while TD25 is moving slowly near the Yucatan, bringing heavy rain and potential for flooding, we're going to be watching this other wave trying to progress westward through the Caribbean. And uh, this continues to be a broad mess of a system where we have kind of an elongated from southwest to northeast structure of this wave. And we talked yesterday about how it's difficult to figure out how the two pieces are going to play with this upper level trough that we can see in here. Very sharp upper level trough northeasterly wind here, southwesterly wind near Puerto Rico in the upper levels. That's interacting with a wave that has kind of a western piece and a bit of a, a northeastern piece here. Now, models have come into a little bit better agreement that this southern or western piece will become the more dominant one as it moves west northwestward toward uh, the vicinity of perhaps Jamaica or the tip of Haiti and the Western Caribbean during the next few days, whereas this one to the Northeast may weaken a little bit. So if we look at the GFS upper level forecast here, this is uh, showing the upper trough in orange and uh, the purple contours show the rotation associated with this tropical wave. And we'll see that uh, compared to yesterday's model runs, the Northern piece is less dominant and we have the Southern piece kind of taking over by Sunday as we see TD25 over here near the Yucatan. And this could become an area of low pressure that may find itself in an environment that is fairly decent for development. Now, initially here, it is uh, dealing with this tongue of orange, this upper level trough, and that interaction is complicated. So what comes out the other side by Monday is still uncertain, but on the GFS at least, we get an area of low pressure here near Jamaica and the tip of Haiti on Monday that as it moves westward here, finds itself under a broad upper level ridge aloft. And this bubble of low potential vorticity or blue colors on this plot is a region of fairly low shear. And so depending on how much dry air is left over in the Caribbean, we could have a system develop Developing here that has a fairly favorable environment and we could have a bona fide tropical storm in the Western Caribbean by the time we get into the middle part of the week. After this point, details are hard to come by since we need to see how it interacts with the upper level trough during the weekend first before we're really gonna know where the storm tries to consolidate if it does form. So uh, individual model forecasts in this case for a storm south of Cuba on Tuesday evening should probably be taken with a grain of salt. So we're not really sure what's going to be around here in the Western Caribbean or exactly where it will be located by Tuesday or Wednesday. We'll know more in a couple of days after we get this mess to consolidate a little bit and get farther west. 
that's about it for uh, today's video. Again, TD25 looking healthy, but it is running out of time and we'll be moving over land tomorrow. So unlikely to strengthen explosively, but will likely strengthen a little bit into Tropical Storm Gamma by the time it makes landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula. Somewhere near or south of the island of Cozumel is where it is likely, but it is a broad system and heavy rain is the primary concern here with flash flooding over portions of Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula and Western Cuba, and even some moisture may get up here into Florida as well as some of the streams up the cold front out of the Caribbean and uh, this will be a slow mover that will likely move up and then turn west over the coming days a little bit of an uncertain forecast but likely to bring wet weather to the region for several days to come that's it for now thanks for watching